adik-adik Selamat datang ke Pustakan Yusrawak Student Festival ha, Untuk kali ini, Aunty Ong akan membawakan cerita yang bertajuk Sang Monyet dan Pokok Rambutan Oleh Hafizah Alim Jom kita mulakan Pokok rambutan hidup di sebidang tanah Pokok rambutan berasa sangat sunyi Pokok rambutan selalu berharap akan mendapat kawan baru Pada suatu hari, sang monyet datang ke situ Pokok rambutan berasa amat gembira Sang monyet, marilah tinggal di sini Berlawa pokok rambutan Terima kasih, aku pun suka tinggal di sini Kata sang monyet Sang monyet bergawit dengan riang Pokok rambutan berasa terhibur Pokok rambutan tidak berasa sunyi lagi kerana pokok rambutan sudah mempunyai kawan. Musim buah akan tiba. Pokok rambutan telah berputik dengan banyak. Sang monyet berasa sangat gembira. Sejak pokok rambutan berputik, sang monyet tidak bergait lagi. Sang monyet takut putik-putik yang baru keluar itu akan gugur ke tanah. Sang monyet hanya duduk-duduk di atas pokok Aku tak sabar menunggu buah-buah ini masak Kata sang monyet Sabarlah, tidak lama lagi buah-buah ini akan masak Pasti kamu suka rasanya yang manis Pujuk pokok rambutan Lambat benar buah-buah ini masak Aku nak pulang ke hutan dahulu sudah lama aku tidak bertemu dengan kawan-kawanku Nanti aku kesini semula Kata sang monyet Nanti ajaklah kawan-kawan kamu ke sini Pelawa pokok rambutan Baiklah kawan-kawan aku tentu gembira bertemu dengan kamu nanti Balas sang monyet Sang monyet pun pergi dari situ Kini Pokok rambutan tidak bersendirian lagi Kini buah-buah rambutan itu mula membesar Buah-buah itu berwarna hijau dan masih muda Tidak lama kemudian, sang monyet pun datang bersama dengan kawan-kawannya Ada yang membawa anak kecil Hai pokok rambutan, apa khabar? Sapa sang monyet Sehat, buah-buahku belum masak lagi, warnanya masih hijau Kamu kena tunggu buah-buah ini masak terlebih dahulu Barulah start dimakan Kata pokok rambutan Sang monyet dan kawan-kawannya tidak mengendahkan kata-kata pokok rambutan Mereka tetap makan buah yang muda itu Buah ini Kenatlah kamu tipu aku Kata sang monyet Memanglah rasanya kelat Kerana masih muda lagi Balas pokok rambutan Sang monyet dan kawan-kawannya tidak berpuas hati Kerana buah-buah itu rasanya kelat Mereka mengutip buah rambutan yang muda itu Lalu bermain dengannya Setelah puas bermain-main, sang monyet dan kawan-kawannya pun masuk ke dalam hutan semula Pokok rambutan berasa sangat sedih akan sikap sang monyet dan kawan-kawannya itu Buah-buahnya habis musnah Pokok rambutan berasa kesal kerana memilih sang monyet sebagai kawan Sekian, terima kasih Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera adik-adik Hari ini, Auntie Lin akan bercerita dengan adik-adik Cerita Auntie Lin bertajuk Si Gajah dan Semut Okey, adik-adik dengar ya Ini adalah cerita tentang Si Gajah dan Semut
Di dalam hutan hiduplah seekor gajah. Dia begitu bangga dengan badannya yang besar dan kuat. Aku seekor gajah yang kuat. Aku mahu semua binatang menghormati aku. Aku mahu mereka tunduk kepada aku. <laughs> si gajah ini suka memberi masalah dengan binatang yang lain di dalam hutan. Dia selalu mengejek mereka. Pada suatu hari, sedang dia berjalan-jalan di dalam hutan, dia berjumpa dengan seekor burung yang sedang hinggap di atas dahan pokok. Si gajah pun berkata, Hei burung, apa yang kau buat di atas pokok itu? Ha? Tidakkah kau melihat aku yang berada di bawah ini? Mengapa engkau tidak menghormati aku? Aku mahu kau tunduk kepada aku. Aku binatang yang kuat, yang besar di dalam hutan ini. <laughs> si burung ketakutan lalu menjawab. Kenapa harus begitu? Kata si burung. Aku tidak mahu menghormati engkau. Kata burung kepada si gajah. Mendengar jawapan si burung itu, si gajah merasa marah. Lalu menggoyangkan pokok itu dan sehingga tercabut akar pokok itu. Si burung apalagi ketakutan dan terus terbang lari daripada si gajah. Ah, baru kau kenal siapa aku, ha? Akulah. Binatang yang kuat. Ha, 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 ha. Kata si gajah. Si gajah pun berlalu dari situ dan berjalan-jalan lagi di dalam hutan. Ha, ha, sambil berkata, pergilah kau burung. Ha, ha, pergilah kau burung. Barulah kau kenal siapa aku. Ha, 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 ha. Kata si gajah sambil berjalan-jalan. Selepas itu, si gajah pun singgah di tebing sungai dan minum air di sungai. Di tebing sungai itu tinggal semut dan keluarganya di dalam sebuah busut. Setiap hari, semut akan keluar mencari makanan. Apabila si gajah melihat semut, dia cuba untuk mengganggu semut pula. Hei semut, apa yang kau bawa itu? Ha? Aku sedang membawa makanan untuk keluarga ku gajah. Si gajah yang jahat itu berniat jahat untuk mengganggu si semut. Si gajah itu... Lalu mengambil air, menggunakan belalainya, lalu menghembuskan air itu ke semut. Dan berkecailah makanan semut itu tadi, lalu semut itu pun menangis. <Sing> Sampai hati engkau gajah Sampai hati engkau gajah Memusnahkan makanan aku Aku bersusah payah Mencari makanan ini Untuk keluarga aku gajah Mengapa engkau musnahkan Makanan aku Ha 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 Padan muka kau Ha 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 Kata si gajah Ketawalah gajah Ketawalah Aku akan balas perbuatan kau itu. Akan aku balas. Aku berjanji akan membalasnya gajah. Kau tunggulah nanti. Kata si semut kepada si gajah. Ha, ha, ha. Aku tidak peduli kepada kau semut. Kau tidak menghormati aku. Sebab itulah aku marah kepada engkau. Kata si gajah kepada semut. Suatu hari si semut melihat gajah sedang tidur. Si semut lalu berfikir, Ha, pai aku masuk ke dalam belalai gajah ini. Akan aku ajar si gajah ini, kata semut di dalam 
hatinya. Si semut pun masuk ke dalam belalai gajah yang panjang itu lalu menggigit belalai gajah itu. Dan apa yang terjadi kepada si gajah? Si gajah terbangun dan menjerit, "Tolong, aduh, aduh. Apakah yang berada di dalam belalai aku ini? Aduh, sakit, sakit. Tolong, tolong. Ada sesuatu yang berada di dalam belalai aku ini. Tolong, tolong keluar daripada belalai aku." Kata si gajah menjerit kesakitan. Si semut pun keluar perlahan-lahan daripada belalai gajah itu. Apabila si gajah melihat si semut, dia terkejut. Kerana semut yang sedang menggigit belalainya tadi. Gajah ketakutan lalu meminta maaf kepada si semut. Maafkan aku semut, maafkan aku semut Aku berjanji tidak akan mengganggu kau lagi semut Maafkan aku semut Kau harus berjanji juga untuk tidak mengganggu binatang lain di dalam hutan ini Kau harus sedar bahawa tidak ada yang besar ataupun yang kecil Kita masing-masing mempunyai keistimewaan tersendiri gajah Kau harus ingat itu gajah Kata semut kepada gajah Jangan sombong Kau gunalah kekuatan engkau untuk menolong binatang lain gajah Kata semut lagi kepada si gajah Baik semut, baik semut Aku akan ingat pesan kau Si gajah pun berlalu dari situ Begitulah adik-adik pengajaran pada cerita ini adalah kita semua mempunyai kemampuan kita sendiri di mana kita tidak mengira saiz besar ataupun kecil. Hiduplah saling menghormati dan tolong menolong di antara satu sama lain. Ha, dengar-dengar tu adik. Okey adik, bye. Jumpa lagi. Terima kasih semua. Hi everybody, I am Auntie Selin from Little Story Club. How are you today? If you are fine, if you are good, can you give me a big thumbs up? Fantastic. Now, today I am going to be sharing with you one of my favorite stories about one of my favorite animals. Can you guess what animal it is? A monkey? Mm-mm, nope. A cat? Good guess, but mm, no. A bird? Mm, mm, no. Did you say an elephant? You're right. My story is Alma. It's about an elephant named Alma, and it is written by David McKee. Are you ready? Let's read this together. So there was once a herd of elephants. Elephants young, elephants old, elephants tall and short, fat and thin. They were all different, but they were all very happy and they were all pretty much the same color. Now, all except for Elmer. Now, Elmer was a little different. He was patchwork. Can you tell me what colors are there? Yes, and what is this? And this color? And this color? And this? Fantastic, you know your colors. Indeed, Alma was yellow and orange and red and pink and purple and blue and green and black and white. So many colors. Now, it was also Alma who kept all the other elephants very happy. Their games and jokes were always his idea. If an elephant was laughing, the cause was usually Elmer. However, Elmer himself wasn't happy. 
You know why? He was very sad that he looked different from the other elephants. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant? He thought. No wonder they laugh at me. One morning, just as the rest were waking up, Elmer, he slipped away. Where do you think he went to? Let's find out. Now, as he walked through the jungle, Elmer met the other animals. Can you tell me what animals are in here? Very good. And they all recognized him. They said, good morning, Elmer. After a long walk, Elma found what he was looking for, a large bush covered with elephant-colored berries. Elma caught hold of the bush and shook it until the berries fell onto the ground. Now, can you pretend that you're holding onto a bush? And can you shake it? One, two, three, shake! And indeed, that was what Elma did to the bush. He shook the bush until all the berries fell onto the ground. Then, Elma lay down and rolled over on the berries. This way and that. He picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over until he was covered with berry juice. When he had finished, there was no sign of yellow, orange, red, pink, blue, green, purple, black or white. He looks like just any other elephant. Now, on his way back through the jungle, Elmer passed the other animals again. Do you remember them? Good morning, elephant, they said. Oh. Does it mean that they don't recognize him anymore? Let's see what happens next. Now, when Elma rejoined the herd, none of the other elephants recognized him. Can you recognize Elma anywhere? Wow, you are good. As he stood there, Elma felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around. Same old jungle, same old blue sky, same old rain cloud, same old elephants. What's wrong? All the other elephants were standing absolutely still. Let's try to stay still for five seconds. They were absolutely still, silent and serious. Elmer had never seen them so serious. It made him want to laugh. Finally, he could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk and at the top of his voice, he shouted, Boo! Out said, boo, didn't he? And what do you think the other animals, the other elephants did? The other elephants, they jumped in surprise. Elmo was helpless with laughter. Then the others began to laugh. Too bad Elmo isn't here to share the fun with us, they said, laughing harder and harder and harder. And then the rain cloud burst. When the rain fell on Alma, the patchwork started to show again. Oh, Alma, gasped an old elephant as Alma was washed back to normal. You've played some really good jokes, but this, this has been the biggest laugh of all. What would we do without you? We must celebrate you every year, Alma, said another. The day of Elmer's best joke. All of us elephants would decorate ourselves in his honor, said a third. And Elmer, you would decorate yourself in elephant colors. So, one day each year, the elephants color themselves yellow, or orange, or red, or pink, 
or purple or blue or green or even white and black and they have a parade so if you happen to see an elephant in the Elmer's Day parade who is ordinary elephant color you know his name and his name is that's right his name is Elmer and that is the story of the very special elephant Elmer I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope that you will continue reading and reading more and more stories. Thank you very much everybody. Bye bye.大家好我是伟林我是来自半岛的雪兰儿州万老很开心能够因为萨达瓦丘人翻西沃我能够在这里跟大家说我的故事想起森林大家一定都想起了好多好多的树木想一想在森林里面其实我们的脚一样也是
，太阳，大海，当然还会看见许许多多其他的形状，这些都是各种各样的爱，也是最后形成了一个大爱的世界。他完成任务了，他自己也变完整啦。最后，最后一句话，爱，我们每个人的使命。这本书献给那些我爱的人，这就是我写的一首简单的歌，让爱持续运转。待会我也会唱给大家听哦。这个就是我啦。听完这个故事，是不是觉得大自然是很爱我们的？爱让世界运转，这个就是转了。大家看一看，这个是地球是吗？照到阳光的部分，照不到阳光的部分，是黑暗的。地球是由西转向东的，转回同一面就是一天的。地球自转的时候，其实也有环绕太阳转的。这个是太阳，那么地球是如此环绕太阳转，转完一圈就是一年了。转，献给那些无法对颜色有概念的人。也许你不知道，它有多神秘。有人称它为灵魂之窗，而且我们每个人都有一对哦。它可以让我们看看这世界有多美丽。我们的世界可大呢！我在这个岛上只是一小微点，而这个岛在地球上只是一小块。地球在太阳系里只是一小粒。在整个银河系里，又只是一小点；而银河系在整个宇宙里面，也只是数十亿中的其中一个。据说，宇宙是有一个大爆炸后形成的，一大群星星聚集成了银河系。太阳就是其中一个星星，地球就是环绕着太阳，其中一个美丽的星球。这个星球有着无数的生物，人类就是其中一种生物了。是每个人都是完美的。我跟其他人一样，有一双眼睛。可是，自小失明了。但是，我的心满是爱，就像宇宙一样浩瀚。这个就是转啦。现在我唱那首《让爱持续运转》给大家听。发现像是太阳，给我们光和温暖；包容像是大海，接受我们说一切。原来像是土地。
说完啦，跟大家说再见。Hi, my name is Aryo from Indonesia. I'm very happy to be part of the virtual Sarawak Children Festival 2020. And now it's my turn to tell you a story. One morning, In a jungle came an old man, a capsular. He was carrying a big box of caps. Well, that time, that morning, he walked through the jungle because he needs to walk through the jungle. That was the shortest route to the next village, the place that he wanted to sell all his caps. That morning, with the big box full of caps, the old man, walking very slowly, between the trees, the big trees, and all the animals. Oh, I'm scared because it's a jungle. Actually, this is not a good idea to walk into the jungle. Because still, even though this is morning, it's scary. Because at that time, he heard a lot of voices. Well, the cap sellers, the old man, he decided to be brave and remember, I'm going to go to the next village to sell a lot of caps. So I need to walk into this jungle, said the old man. Then she walked, he walked, he walked, he walked. Top, 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 top. Until suddenly, oh, I'm tired. So maybe it's time for me to go to sleep, take a nap, rest, and then continue my journey said the old man and then the old man he found one big very tall tree and he decided to rest there he put the big box full of caps and then He went for a nap, but the old man, 
he didn't realize the next guest animals not just one but more than one came down from the trees near the old man opened the box and took all the caps and went back up on the trees until not long after that the old man realized something was moving near him Oh. Oh. He saw the box was opened and all the caps were gone. Something or someone or some creature took all my caps. <gasps> What should I do? What should I do? I cannot continue my journey to sell the caps to the next village. Tap, tap, tap. Because I don't have my caps, said the old man. But then he heard a lot of noises. Up on the trees, he saw a lot of monkeys wearing caps from the box. The old man said, You monkey, give back my caps, said the old man. But the monkey, they did not understand. Bring back my caps said the old man and the monkey said oh, oh, ah, ah. huh the monkey imitate me said the old man bring back my caps and then the monkey said oh, oh, ah, ah. Again, the monkey imitate the old man. <clears throat> My caps. <clears throat> My caps. <clears throat> so the old man, he cannot asked the monkey to return all the caps and the old man cannot communicate with the monkey and then the old man got an idea oh yes maybe the jungle made me scared full of animals that i cannot think of some are scary and some are not, but I can be more smart than all the animals. So the old man walking, 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 tap, tap, tap. He walked around the tree. He made unique and silly gestures. Hmm. What should I do? Hmm. And then he looked at the monkey. The monkey also imitated what he did. And then the old man did this. What should I do? 
the monkey. Wah! Wah! The old man. What should I do? The monkey. The monkey raised the hat on top of their head. And then suddenly, the old man did this. And then all the monkey lift the hat and threw it on the ground. And the old man rushed, gathered all the cap, put it in the box, closed the box, carried the box, and ran. Went to the next village. And so, that's the story of an old man, a cap seller, trying to go to the next village, selling all the caps into the jungle. But remember, you can be smart. Just use your cap. <laughs> That's all the story. Thank you for listening. See you another time. Bye. My name is Anna Souza Gavin. I am a storyteller and a coach with the Organic Storytellers in Singapore. I am so excited to be part of the virtual Sarawak Children Festival this year. Today, I bring to you a Balinese folk tale. Are you ready? A long time ago, in Bali, in a jungle, the chief was elephant. Elephant was always fair. That means he always made sure to listen to the both sides of a problem. One night, Elephant was sleeping under a huge banyan tree. When suddenly he heard the sound. Who's there? Oh, it's you, Gecko. What are you doing on top of my head in the middle of the night? Elephant, elephant, I can't sleep. All night long, the fireflies are flashing their lights on, off, on, off, on, off. It's so annoying. Tell them to stop. Well, oh, get cold. I will talk to the oh, fireflies tomorrow morning. Now go back to the tree and sleep. Gecko was very annoyed, but he went back to the tree, and Elephant went back to sleep. The next morning, when Elephant woke up, he called the fireflies. Oh, oh fireflies! Fireflies! Yes, Chief! What is it? Oh, fireflies, is that true that you flash your lights on and off, on and off, all night long? Oh, yes, chief, we have to. Otherwise, 
people might trip into buffalo's dung. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, that's a good job. So you just keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, Chief. Bye. And they flew away. When night came, Elephant went back to sleep. And who came to disturb him? Gecko. 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 Oh, it's you, Gecko. Well, you know, I've talked to the fireflies and they're actually doing a very good job. You see, they have to flash their lights on and off all night long. Otherwise, people might trip into buffalo's dung. Mm. Well, then tell buffalo to stop pooping everywhere. All right, Gecko, I'll talk to Buffalo tomorrow morning. And Gecko went back to the tree, very grumpily. The next morning, Elephant woke up. Oh, hmm. oh Buffalo, Buffalo! Yes, Chief. Oh, Buffalo, why do you poop everywhere? Mm, Chief, I must poop to cover the holes that the rain makes. Otherwise, people might trip and fall. Oh, that's a good job. You just keep doing what you're doing. Oh, thanks, Chief. Mm. And when night came, Elephant went to sleep. <coughs> and who came? Gecko! 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 Oh, oh, Gecko, it's you again. Well, I've talked to Buffalo, and he has to poop to cover the holes that the rain makes. Otherwise, people might trip and fall. Mm. Well, 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 in that case, tell rain to stop raining and making holes everywhere. All right, Gecko, I'll talk to Ray tomorrow morning. And Gecko had to go back to his tree once more. The next morning, oh, oh rain, rain. Yes, Chief. What is it? Oh, Raid, is it true that you're making holes everywhere? Shh. Yes, Chief. I have to make holes and fill them with water so mosquitoes can breathe. Otherwise, Gecko would have nothing to eat. Mm, that is a good job. You just keep doing what you're doing. All right. Thanks, Chief. And when night came, Elephant tried to sleep, but as usual, Gecko, Gecko, Gecko. Oh, Gecko, this is too much, you know.
I have spoken with rain. And rain is making holes everywhere and filling them with water so that mosquitoes can breathe so you have something to eat. So now you see everything is connected. So stop bothering me and let me sleep. <laughs> Get going back to the tree, thinking about everything that Elephant had told him. Meanwhile, Elephant went back to sleep. And that night, Elephant slept really, really well. As he did the nights after that. Because Gecko decided to stop sleeping at night completely. He now Gecko sleeps during the day and at night he is busy eating mosquitoes and that's a really good job gecko you just keep doing what you're doing thank you and thank you everyone for watching. Enjoy the festival. Bye. Hello, my name's Jackie, and I've got a story for you in my storytelling box. There are some Australian animals in here. I wonder how well you know your Australian animals. Let's have a look. Ah, here's a big old tree with a hollow in it. I wonder who lives in that hollow. Let's have a look. Can you guess? <laughs> I think you might have guessed already. I'll go very slowly because I don't want to frighten whoever it is. Ah, there it is, an Australian barn owl. Owls like to live in the hollows of very old eucalyptus trees. Oh, here's another one. This is a hole in the ground, a burrow. Who lives in burrows? Well, rabbits live in burrows, but rabbits aren't Australian animals. Although they do live here. Let's see. Who is in the burrow? It's Wombat. <laughs> I love Wombats. Look at that. We'll leave you to your peace and quiet as well. Now, here is the story I want to tell you. It begins with a garden. This is Molly's garden. Molly liked to grow all sorts of things in her garden, but she especially liked to grow vegetables. You can see here she's got tomatoes, sweet corn, peas and, and beans. Molly was planning a picnic and she was intending to share all these vegetables with her friends. But one morning she went into her garden and she could hear munch, 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 munch. Someone was in her vegetable garden eating the vegetables. <gasps> and there he is. Oh, kangaroo, kangaroo, please, please don't eat all the vegetables. Uh, they're to share with everyone. Did Kangaroo listen? Uh-uh. Munch, 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 munch. Oh, Kangaroo, please stop. Munch, munch, munch. And then Kangaroo did what kangaroos sometimes do. He rocked back on his tail. He rocked back on his tail. He rocked back on his tail. And he sent Molly flying over the fence. Whee! Oh 
dear. So Molly's friend, who's this? Koala, decided that uh, go off and have a word with Kangaroo. Kangaroo, Kangaroo, could you please stop eating all of the vegetables? Molly's growing them for, so that we can all share. Did Kangaroo listen? Uh-uh. Went right on. Munch, munch, munch. Munch, munch, munch. Munch, 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 munching. Oh, Kangaroo, please stop. And then Kangaroo did what kangaroos sometimes do. He rocked back on his tail, rocked back on his tail, Rock back on his tail and sent Koala flying over the fence. Whee! Mm. So, Millie's friend, can you guess who this friend is? <laughs> a big bird, Emu. Emu went off to have a word with Kangaroo. But when Emu arrived at the vegetable garden, he couldn't see Kangaroo anywhere. But he could hear, munch, 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 munch. Kangaroo, Kangaroo, I can hear you. Kangaroo, where are you? Kangaroo, munch, 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 munch. And then a head popped up over the tomatoes. Oh, there you are. Kangaroo, could you please, please stop eating all of Molly's vegetables? They're for everyone to share. Did Kangaroo listen? Uh-uh. Instead, he did what kangaroos sometimes do. He rocked back on his tail, rocked back on his tail, rocked back on his tail, and he sent Emu flying over the fence. Whee! Oh. So now, all of the friends were sitting on the wrong side of the fence. Well, someone had been watching all of this. Do you know who this is? This is Magpie. Magpie visits my garden. Magpie has the most beautiful singing voice. I love listening to magpies. I can sing like a magpie. Well, I can try. This is how I sing like a magpie. You ready? Perhaps you can sing like a magpie with me. <laughs> well, perhaps I'm not so good as a magpie. Oh, magpie looked at the three and said, Look at you. You're looking all very miserable. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, magpie, kangaroo is in the veggie patch and he's eating all the veggies. There won't be any left for us to share. <laughs> I'll go and speak to him. So magpie flew off and did what magpies sometimes do. He swooshed down over kangaroo. Kangaroo felt the whoosh of his wings and the clack of his beak. whoosh clack and when magpie had kangaroos full and undivided attention he gave him a bit of a talking to oh kangaroo what are you doing eating all the vegetables molly's growing them to share with everyone but at the rate you're going there won't be any left Oh, oh dear, Kangaroo felt terrible. He really hadn't been listening and he hadn't thought it through. And now he felt really bad. So he knew what he had to do. He went to Molly and her friends and he apologised. 
he said he was sorry and he really meant it. And now there they are, Molly and her friends. And together they're planning a wonderful picnic and thinking about how they're going to share all those vegetables, the tomatoes, sweet corn, peas and beans. And that's the story of the kangaroo in the veggie patch. I like to grow vegetables, but I live in the city, so I don't have a problem with a kangaroo in the garden. But I do sometimes have a problem with snails eating all the vegetables. Mm. Perhaps if I just rounded them up and, and explained to them that they're not to eat the vegetables. There's plenty of other things they could eat. Do you think that would work? I hope you enjoyed the story.